and we've got we got a lot of people here tonight. <laughs> and George, you're looking a little fuzzy there, but maybe that's some Vaseline on the lens or something. We're not quite sure what's going on. But uh, our guest this tonight is, is the drugs in the air in Vegas. Yeah, all right. <laughs> hey, but goes on there, stays there. But uh, our guest tonight is Tim Friedlander, and we've got some great tech questions, and we're going to learn all about. Soundbox LA and some of the work that they did over there in a very short period of time. And you've got something about uh, USB in or something like that. Everybody's talking about that. Just defining USB audio, why is stuff two, why is stuff USB three? Yeah, that okay, kind of what, whatever. And I got a rant later on too. So stay tuned, voiceover body shop coming right up. Two men, twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Widom, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience experience in broadcasting and recording and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is together to bring you all the latest technology today's voiceover superstars and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business this is voiceover body shop voiceover body shop is brought to you by voiceoveressentials.com home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, Live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Wow. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> a live studio audience here in Sherman Oaks and uh, you're in you're at NAB in Vegas. I, I mean we literally just arrived at the apartment we're staying in to Airbnb, Maxine and I and we're going to be walking the halls tomorrow uh, and covering a bunch of stuff and hopefully we'll have some ch cherry picked items for you on next week's show. That'll be great. You know, it's NAB is, well, let's put it clearly, it's a digital orgasm, essentially. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. It is, it is yeah, yeah. more equipment than you could possibly deal with. And so, uh, after my experience there last year and the year before, but uh, lucky you, you it's get to be there. To, it's a lot to cover, but more so I'm trying to not be overwhelmed by the sheer volume of it all and find some really cool stuff and also some cool people because we're going to get to talk to joe cipriano randy thomas is here at a podcast booth joe joe's here with bsw and then uh source elements our friends from source elements um we'll be talking to a lot of people tomorrow so stay tuned for that next week very good looking forward to it and we've got some uh interesting tech stuff to, to talk about tonight uh, if we can get our mouths to work and uh so let's get things rolling it's now time for Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. Take Dan. All righty. For April 9th, the Voice Over Extra News. Why change now? If you've been running your voiceover business and voicing scripts in the same way for years, why change now? Maybe you're in a so-so rut. Maybe you'd like to boost your voiceover income this year. Or if you're a VO newcomer, how do you know when it's time to move forward? To get to the next level. Like Joe Lesh says in his latest Mojo Friday video, 
the same old tricks equal the same old life. Joe is your instructor at the VO Booth Camp Online, and in a brief video now on VoiceOver Extra, he argues that hesitation to move forward usually comes from a lack of confidence. If you don't go for it, Joe says, you'll always be where you are right now. Failing to act will get you nowhere. Confidence is indeed a main ingredient to success, and to that, talent manager Celia Siegel adds seven career green lights, signals that you can and should move forward. They're detailed now in an article on voiceoverextra.com. Look at the features headlined at the top of the homepage, and here are the highlights of those important seven signals. Can you afford the investment of the change? Your heart says, yes. You've hit a plateau and need to move on. Your booking ratio is going up, so continue that climb. You've consistently hit your financial goal for at least four months in a row. Keep it going. You've got connections in this biz, and the VO business itself is giving you the green light. So Celia reminds us that sometimes the voiceover industry chooses you and sweeps you into the tide. Pay attention. Those signs will be everywhere. Check out Celia's article and Joe's video now on VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. Well, important stuff there. Uh, it's a tough career, and uh, our guest tonight, Tim Friedlander, is going to talk about some of the stuff he went through, because uh, I have a feeling you went through all that stuff. I've gone through a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you have. We'll talk to Tim in just a little bit. But you've got uh, your tech update this week is about USB stuff. Yeah, I found a great article. I'm on the mailing list for for Audient, the makers of great audio interfaces like the ID14, ID4, ID22, and now the ID44. And their blog's really good because it's not a self-promoting blog. It's really a pretty educational blog. I do recommend you guys subscribe to it over at audient.com. It's A-U-D-I-E-N-T. But the... Uh, product they're talking about lately, or the technology rather, is USB versus 3 or even Fun Thunderbolt. And so they really want to explain why their products particularly are still using USB 2.0 when USB 3 has been around for a few years now. And basically what they say is imagine a crude analogy. Imagine two roads, one with just one lane, USB 2.0, and one with multiple lanes. USB 3.0, and both roads have the same speed limit, while the bigger lane can carry more vehicles at the same time. The vehicles themselves can still travel at the same speed on either road. If there's a quite heavy traffic, then the smaller road will get clogged up and less cars will be able to travel down this road compared to the larger road. However, in light traffic, both roads will be able to throughput the same amount of cars. It's just that there is a lot of spare room on the larger road. So this analogy, we can compare light traffic to audio data. Light traffic, in other words, not a lot of cars. That's audio data. Audio data isn't extremely heavy like video data. Like midnight um, on the 405. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's video data. <laughs> audio, data is, audio data is the I-15 freeway between L.A., in Las Vegas, once you get over the El Cajon Pass. <laughs> That's audio data, which some of you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, it works fine on both large and small roads. Heavy traffic would be video data and huge data transfer from a hard drive. To prove this, we can actually do the math and work out how much of the USB bandwidth is required by audio data. But, you know, if we take the worst case scenario, of something with 44 channels of audio, that would be the ID44, their new product, working at 96 kilohertz and using a bit depth of 24 bits. In other words, the settings completely maxed out. It's using a, it's using a, a bandwidth of 480 megabits per second, which is what USB 2.0 can actually handle. This means that the interface is transmitting and receiving 44 separate streams of samples, and each sample is made of 24 bits. So the point being is that um, their system, despite using what's considered an older system, is still more stable. USB 
no specification requires complete backwards compatibility for USB 2. So even if USB 2 falls out of usage, USB 2 devices like the ID44 and all of the stuff from Audience and the vast majority of all the audio devices you guys are using with USB, no matter how much we progress with USB 3, all that stuff continues to, to work. So it just makes for a more stable system. Um, USB versus Thunderbolt. Why not Thunderbolt? It's because Thunderbolt is not completely prevalent on all computers, especially on PC. So Audio wants to make a product that plugs into the most possible computers. You know, in comparison, Apollo, we talked about the Apollo Arrow recently. That product went the other direction. Instead of having a standard that's supported by the most computers, they took a chance and made a product that's supported by the least number of computers in using Thunderbolt 3 on the Apollo. So audience idea is to be more compatible on more devices. Um, that's the key. To sum up, they wanted their devices, their interfaces to be available and be able to be used anywhere using a format that almost all computers support. So you'll never turn up at a friend's place with your audience product and not be able to put it into their Mac or their PC. So that's why USB 2, that's why it still persists in you know, Audion is one company, but many others are going to probably share the same reasoning for using this old technology. All right. You know, is it going to make a difference? I mean, some people still use an USB, too. It's like, just plug it in and it works. So I, mean, I know. I mean, it, USB 2.0 is, is, again, the it's still the most common gold standard in the world of recording audio for all those reasons. We just don't need this big, fat, crazy pipe. We need something that's a good, reliable pipe. And that's why USB 2 is still the standard for most audio gear. All righty. You know, if you'll notice, we're actually in Tim's old studio right now. <laughs> this, we're going to be talking about that, what it used to look like and what it looks like now in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and we've got uh, we got a great question about cables, and we've got uh, we've got Tim Friedlander and a lot of people in here. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voiceover Body Shop. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, what question do we get the most often? Far and away, it's, how do I even get started in voiceover? And we've got a great answer for that. Go to VO2GoGo's free getting started in VO class. You heard right. Free! Gratis! It's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class. Taught by vo 2 go -Go's David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four, four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Why, yes, you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. 
This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Alrighty, and we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop on a Monday night. Uh, Tim Friedlander is standing by with lots of other people. You know, let's get some applause in here. Get an idea. Yeah. The audience cam up. Show them the audience cam there, Sue, so we can uh, see how many people we've actually got stuffed in now here. Another round of applause. Yeah. Yes, it's a party here at VoiceOver Body Shop. And... Uh, and uh, of course, you can be here too if you want to be here for uh, when we when we shoot the show on Monday night live. If you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area, just let us know. Write to us at the guys at vobs .tv. Give us your name, your social security number, your bank account numbers, and we'll show you the secret handshake and let you in here. But anyway, but you got to leave early because it's not easy to get here at five thirty <laughs> <laughs> on any day in Los Angeles, except maybe on Easter. Okay, so. George and I have a very specific job in this world, and that's to take care of your home voiceover studios. <laughs> it's amazing what people uh, you know, try to do in their home voiceover studios. But uh, if someone wants to work with you, George, how do they go about doing that? Well, you need to go find me over at georgethetech.com. And that's my home on the web for anything tech support that I do for the voiceover community from sound checks to making uh, your customized twisted wave stack, creating audiobook mastering settings or designing a studio, acoustic treatment, that's where it's all done. You can schedule me right there. It's an automated scheduling system. Um, or some of the stuff's virtual. Send me audio and I send you back your files so you can work with me a lot of different ways. Cool. Yeah, and if you want to work with me, you know, because we're here, uh, all you have to do is go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, click on the contact me and uh, we'll talk. Also, if you want to drop off a sample of your audio so I can listen to it, and by the way, George gets to listen to it every now and again, too. We do talk about these things. You know, we don't we don't mention any names, but we do talk about these things. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so if you go to my, my website and click on the Specimen Collection Cup, and that will take you to a Dropbox, and you can send me some of your audio, and I'll give it a listen. Which brings me into my rant this week, which I have not had a chance to do for a while. <laughs> because I've been getting audio from people, and, uh, and then somebody wrote to me over the weekend about, about all the great equipment there is out there to use in, uh, in a voiceover home studio. And it hit me, like, for the last 15 years, all I've been talking about is all the stuff that we use for voiceover, none of it, except for a little tiny percentage, was designed for voiceover. It was all designed for recording music and producing music. We're just borrowing this stuff. We're just using it and adapting it to our purposes. So I think it's important that people understand that it's not the equipment. Yeah, it's great to have great stuff. Yeah, it's great to have that Apollo Twin. Yeah, it's great to have that stuff. The thing is, nobody needs to see how the sausage is made. And the fact is, is most engineers, they want it clean, and they want you not messing with it. So there's no piece of equipment. There's no filter. There's none of this stuff that's going to give you a competitive advantage. What they're looking for is that you're not using crappy equipment that you're, there is not background noise, that there isn't electrical noise. If you can create a good acoustical environment, that's going to cause, that's going to solve a lot of your problems right up front. 
most engineers don't want you throwing lots of compression or throwing noise reduction on it or my favorite the noise filter which will filter out not only the noise but also your voice uh somebody wrote to me this week i got a u87 an avalon m5 and i listened to it I'm like yeah that sounds like an, an a u87 and an m5 that'd be great if you're on some fm station in 1978 but uh it's not what they're looking for the idea of a home studio is not to make you sound great if you're a voice actor you should already sound great the idea is to make you sound like you and that's my rant for this week God? <laughs> well said, did, sir. Did, did, did I oh, totally yes, blow yes. your ears off or what? <laughs> no, I'm just checking the audio on Facebook because there's you know a few people saying we don't have our usual dulcet tones. We don't sound quite as good as usual. So I'm just working on what I can from this end to make it sound as clean as I can. All right. um, that said, the issue... Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice rant. I'm reading the chat room. It's great. I love our <laughs> chat room. It's, it's a fantastic community. And they keep us honest and they make sure our audio and our video is up to par. But what I was going to say is that that story, that rant, reminded me just a little like, story from today. In fact, I got here kind of late because a, a good client of mine um, called me while I was at the Golden Corral in <laughs> Hysteria. E eating a fine, fine <laughs> meal, I'm sure. <laughs> Yes, in this area, having lunch, he was having trouble because I had a client complaining about his audio quality. The thing is, he's using a, an Avalon M5. It's going through a Mackie 1202 mixer and into a Steinberg UR22. And it's a signal chain that I set up for him a long time ago. The problem is he's moved and things have gotten out of whack. So his signal chain isn't quite dialed in the way it should be. And he's resulting, what the results are is not so great audio. In fact, clients are complaining of distortion. The great part is when he's working remotely and using his mic port pro, they're telling him the sound's fantastic. <laughs> so when he plugs the mic right into a mic port pro, right into his Mac, beautiful sound. He's using his $1,500 preamp, you know, and all that stuff, not so great sound. So I just thought it tied in beautifully. Yeah. And it really... The more gear there, the more there is to screw up, the more you have to check on and monitor. And it's just, you know, folks, unless you have a specific need for that extra equipment, keep it simple. I keep it totally agree. As simple as possible. Now, of course, I, I can hear our, our, some of our guests' ears melting as I was saying that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Carson Beck, who's a great engineer, and Tim Friedlander, who's our, our main guest tonight, is uh, they're both audio engineers. But we'll talk about this. They're also music guys, and that's a that's a whole different thing. Uh, so it's important for people to understand that unless you're a musician, you don't need to have all the expensive stuff. It's all about acoustics and mic technique and setting proper levels, and that will solve a lot of problems. Anyway, we have a question from our amazing audience out there uh, from Joy Baker, who says... Thank you so much for VOBS and sharing your time and expertise. I've listened to the podcast for over five years, and I've recently started watching live, and I know she's out there. She saw her in the chat room before. It is a highlight of my week. Well, thank you for joining us, Joy. Uh, she says, I'm rearranging my studio to have an editing station and remote recording set up in my booth, both connected to the same computer, a PC. Well, okay. Uh, I feel like there are some, I, I feel like there are cables everywhere. I'm trying to tidy things up and was hoping you could outline some smart cable protocol. Can I have long parallel runs of cables? Is it a big deal if they overlap a little? Should all necessary crossings be at right angles? I have some cords loosely wrapping an old galvanized metal pipe to help them from getting, uh, uh, get them, help them get from one place to another without dropping down. Will that cause problems? I know it's best to have every cord just the right length, but if they're too long, what can I do with the excess? Make a nice loop when taped with electrical or painter's tape? Are there different rules for different types of cables? Do some cables play nice with others? I have USB 3, USB 2, HDMI, quarter inch audio, eighth inch audio, power cables, DVI, DVI-D, and VGA with extensions and splitters for most of the above. Are you sure? Uh, 
that's a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I know from, from my experience back in the analog days uh, of doing radio remotes and having another station actually come over the microphone, uh, there, there are problems with cables, but with modern technology, it's not quite the same. So what, what are the proper protocols for all these cables? I'll tell you, the most important thing by far is not having power cords running parallel to microphone cables. So any mic that goes from a mic to a preamp or a mic to a mixer, a mic to an interface, you do not want that cable running right alongside parallel to a power cable. That's really the most important thing and the thing you guys really should try to avoid if at all, if at all possible. The rest of this stuff, it's not really that big a deal because we're all running very short cable runs. We're not running really, really long cable runs, and we're not running really complicated studios. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that big of a problem. Just happen to have some cables here with me. Um, yeah, I mean, how long is this thing? This thing is this is a four foot cable. This is usually how long it is. And USB cables unless they're really lousy cables, aren't really subject to interference or anything. They're all, this is, these are all shielded cables, and they don't really cause those types of problems. I think a lot of this is old mythology, uh, but I'm sure I'll get my like, earful from some problems. people about that. Well, okay. A lot of the USB problems stem from extending them, running too long of a cable or trying to extend them more than one time. They can get really flaky when that happens. Yeah. So just keep your USB runs as short as possible. Just keep your video, digital video runs as short as possible also, like HDMI. Those can get flaky over really long runs. Analog stuff, ironically, can handle much longer cable runs usually. Line levels, microphone, ba balanced microphone, VGA video, which is analog. Can handle some pretty long runs without any problems, and that's so, that's and that's the whole idea behind XLR cables is that they're they're these balanced runs and they 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 prevent the interference. That's what they were designed for. Exactly. I mean, in a nutshell, a balanced signal of an audio signal has three wires. One is ground, then there's a plus and a minus, and so the plus and the minus carries the same signal, but they're completely out of phase of each other. They cancel each other. What happens is this noise that gets into the cable cancels itself out because the two signals, when they come back at the other end, are reversed and come back in phase. And the sound, or the noise, I should say, is basically canceled out and it disappears. It's, it's Without diagrams, it's kind of hard to describe, but... That's why a balance is so crucial for microphone signals, so you don't have a hum or a buzz. Right. Um, again, if, if you have a power cord and a mic cable, if they do have to go in close proximity, they should cross at as right an angle as you can. Avoid parallel. Have them cross at an angle. You should be just fine because the, the power doesn't have a chance to interfere or induce noise on the cable if it's crossing at, a, at an angle so if that if that's an issue for you then just try that that, ex, that experiment of course joy is she'll probably report to us in the in the chat room which uh, jack daniel of course monitoring with marvelous expertise tonight uh that uh she's not in she's not experiencing any problems because it's just a mess of cables i mean you should see how this place is set up talk about a mess of cables because we've got some long runs in here, but uh, but it, it really shouldn't be a big deal. So, Joy, report to us if you're actually having any problems. Because if you're not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do we have a club membership for for uh, chat room members who get the most tech support from our show? Because she could be entered in the running for. I, mean, I think we provided the majority of her recent tech support. Yeah, on the show a lot. Well, I, I, she, she wasn't saying it was a problem. She was just saying, I got lots of cables. And, you know, just tie it up into a nice little <laughs> great. knot and bow and stuff. And you'll be fine. Anyway, Tim, Fre Tim Friedlander and lots of other people are standing by and uh, with bated breath to talk to us about all sorts of cool stuff that uh, that he's been involved with. 
Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Do not go away. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Ready. Hey, everybody. I uh, want to tell you about our great and wonderful sponsor, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and so many other cool gadgets. Some new things perhaps maybe I will see tomorrow at NAB. But what you can get currently from them is Source Connect Now. And one thing that you should know about Source Connect Now is that it is available as a standalone app because folks that use audio products that run on Chrome are quite aware that Google Chrome has a way of updating itself on its own and interfering with things that run on Google Chrome. So you may want to consider getting their standalone version. So if you have Source Connect Now or you're using it, or you're thinking about using Source Connect Now to connect to your clients or to have your clients listen in on your sessions, a no-brainer because it's totally free, uh, you might want to get the standalone version, which you can get at source-elements.com. Log in to the page and look at the applications area where you can download new, uh, download new versions of software. You will find there actually is a Source Connect now downloadable. So go ahead and check that out and start giving it a try if you're having issues because of Google Chrome on your Mac or Windows systems. I've been using it for quite a while now, and it's been rock solid for me, so I would highly recommend it. And it, of course, uses any hard audio hardware that's being used on your Mac or Windows system. So give it a try. Head over and, of course, check out all the products they have available over at source-elements.com. Source Connect Standard, the gold standard of remote audio access for recording studios around the globe. You can get a 15-day free trial right there from them. Tell them we sent you. All right. We'll be right back, back in the studio with Dan, Tim, and the rest of the crowd right after this. Minus four, are we at minus 4 dB? We're at minus 4 dB on VOBS. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice of the Body Shop. Minus four. Are we at minus, minus four, four dB? dB? We're at minus, minus four, four dB on. That's right. <laughs> Just turn that, pop that down. All right. Yeah, we're back. Uh, I'd like to introduce our guest. Uh, Tim Friedlander is a great friend of ours. This is a guy who, uh, you know, successful in the voiceover business, doing all sorts of great stuff, which you'll tell us about. Also a musician. You have a master's degree in music education. All sorts of cool stuff, and he owns a studio not quite unlike this one. Uh, so uh, why don't we welcome to the show, he's been here before many times, but not as a guest on air, Tim Friedlander. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. Thank you, thank you. Nice, nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, you know, you're a great friend, and, and, you know, and you've, you've done some great stuff in the voiceover community here in L.A., but first, tell us a little bit why you, where you're from originally and uh, how you got into voiceover. That is a good question. Um, it's a long one. It's a long one. I'm yeah. from um, Idaho originally. Grew up on a farm. No, no, in no. The there woods. is nobody actually <laughs> from Idaho. From Idaho. Yep. <laughs> okay. Born in Spokane, but never lived there and lived in oh, grew up okay. in Idaho, uh, off right. Lake Coeur d'Alene, um, on a big farm. My parents built their own farm. We moved up there until I was about 10 and then uh, moved from there to north of Seattle uh, when I was about 11 years old and lived up there. Until about 2002, when I moved down to L.A. in 2002, and uh, here I am. What what brought you down here? 
Um, it, was, I, it, was, it wasn't the affordable housing, it, I'm sure. In 2002, right? it wasn't so bad. No, <laughs> it was, um, you know, I'm a musician, and at that time, I had been doing, had been in voiceover for a couple of years. So the thought was, well, I'll just move to, to L.A., and, you know, I can support my music career by doing voiceover, uh, which, which um, didn't work out too well at the time. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I had, really had no plan. It was September, like middle of September, and my lease was up in October. I said, I think I'll move to L.A., so I threw everything in a U-Haul a couple weeks later and drove to L.A. Yeah, and that was my plan. Yeah, usually it's a it's a Volkswagen van or something yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, so, but but how did you get into voiceover? I mean, obviously the, you, you're you're multi talented, but what what took you to this particular genre of employment? That's a good question. Well, it it took me a long time to get to this point. I did my first demo in '98 or '99. But, you know, a lot of it back then was, hey, you have a great voice, you should do voiceover. Yeah, I've heard that one before. (laughs) And I came from, uh, my my dad's a drama teacher and a singer and an actor, and I kind of grew up in that environment. So I was used to using my voice and being on stage and and using doing things along those lines. So I just found a coach in Seattle and started training training with her and worked for a couple years um, and came to L.A. with a demo in 2002, and that was really kind of extended my training. I didn't really pursue it. I didn't know how to do it properly. I didn't know how to keep training. I didn't know who to study with. I didn't know how to get auditions. And in 2002, we're talking pre pay to play sites, pre internet right. access. So everything was, you know, all agent based at that point. And, you know, I failed at it for the next 13, 14, 15 years. Um, How'd you support yourself in that time? Uh, I, I taught, played music, and I taught. Um, I spent ten years teaching the private schools in Los Angeles, and I taught music, and I taught private lessons in music, and would work in you know any odd job that you can get. Kind of especially being a musician, you got you do a lot of things at one time. Yeah, to try and support yourself. So about three, four years ago, mm-hmm. you were you were about ready to lock the door and head out of here. I, I was guess. done. Yeah, I, mean, what, I didn't. What, what was going on? You know, I didn't. I didn't exist in, in voiceover four years ago, not less than four years ago, um, and it was, you know, I guess like kind of you know going back and looking a little bit kind of at my history is that you know for a long time I just I I suffer from severe depression a lot, and I did growing up, and it was a lot that really really sidetracked me when you get to L.A. and to be in L.A. and to be in an environment that is so harsh, it adds on top of that. So you know, I just was in this probably just depression for 10 or 15 years, which is a long time. And it was uh, getting close to my 40th birthday and I was tired of living the way I was living. And I didn't like who I was. I didn't like who I was with. I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like anything about who I was and what was happening in my life. And so I decided that I had to start over and essentially got rid of my friends got rid of pretty much everybody I know. I don't think there's anybody, there's nobody here that I know. <laughs> there's nobody in this room or pr- pretty much anybody that I know now that I knew three years ago. Um, wow. I've, I don't think I have people, that I, some musicians that I work with. And, um, you know, I decided I'm going to go back to grad school. I need to get my, get my degree. I'm going to try and pursue music if I can, or I'm going to quit music. And um, I'm going to quit voiceover. And I'm done. I in... 2014, 2015, I did a thousand auditions and didn't book a job. And I just had this ongoing list of jobs and jobs and jobs and jobs I auditioned for that I had just failed at. And I was one of those people that looked at everything I had done and looked at everything, every single thing as a failure and a failure and a failure and a failure. So looking at a thousand failures is a tough place to be. So what changed? What'd you do? Uh, the biggest thing I did was, first of all, I decided that wasn't how I wanted to live anymore. And so I said, I have to do something. And so it was just kind of that, that mindset of either either I'm going to quit everything or I'm going to try one last time. And I had um, had tickets for Voice 2014 on um, suggestion. Mark Cashman suggested that I, that I go to that. So I bought tickets. I had spent a week out on the motorcycle trip up and down the, the West Coast while I was studying um, and doing a paper for grad school. So I would ride for a, for a part of a day and sit in the campground and, and work on, on a paper. And I came back and I was 20 minutes away. I was 20 minutes away from quitting voiceover. And had I rolled over that morning and gone back to sleep, I wouldn't be here. And instead I got up the next morning and I'm like, well, I spent a lot of money on tickets. I better at least drive down to Anaheim and see what's happening. So 10 days on the motorcycle, Got on the motorcycle one more time, drove to Anaheim with 
no, literally nothing but like a, a jean shirt and jeans and I think probably what I've been wearing for three days. Yeah. And I went to Voice 2014 and I saw, the biggest thing I saw is that I wasn't the only one struggling the way that I was struggling. And I wasn't the only one who was dealing with the issues that I was dealing with. And I wasn't the only one who felt down about the whole thing, who felt like, you know, overwhelmed and, and lost. And seeing people, other people who were in that same boat helped a lot. And I just decided that I was going to give it one more try. And, you know, if I leave LA, it's not coming back. It's not like I'm going to leave, you know, and maybe I'll come back when I'm 50 or something. It doesn't, you're not going to do that. You're not going to go back. Yeah, don't do so, it. Yeah, <laughs> some of us do. Some of you do. <laughs> um, for me, that wasn't going to happen. And if I, if I left, I was going to go get a job at a college somewhere, be a professor, teach. And that's what my life was going to be. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I felt okay about it, but it was like, well, you know what? I made the effort and I failed. And that's fine. At least I tried. Right. Um, and I say failed a lot because that's, Maybe if I didn't fail, I felt like I was failing. Yeah. And I, that's a tough thing to be in. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I was, I was at a great seminar this week. Uh, and we learned something. As actors, you're not going to get the job. You know, going to an audition, you're not going to get the job. It's, yeah. You know, it's, there's 10,000 other people out there. Yeah. But you, at least you get to be an actor. Right. Yeah. You know, for three minutes anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, that's, and that's, uh, that's a great piece of advice. And, yeah. uh, but what specifically did you do to get your voiceover career back on track? They, what I, I, opened, I opened up my studio, opened up my house. And I started inviting people over who were kind of doing the same thing that I was doing, which was kind of in this overwhelmed state of not knowing what to do. And, you know, you could pick up the voiceover resource guide or you can go to classes, but to go through the resource guide and see all these names. I don't know who, you know, I don't know who is who and who should I be working with and who is right for me and who's not right for me and not having the money to go and take every single class. I would love to have done that, but just couldn't do it. It wasn't going to happen right. um, at, at that point. And, and so you, you had a studio built already. I had, there's a studio in the back of my house that was actually built um, universal records. Canada had paid to build the space out for some artists who were living back there and uh, they stopped paying. So they got kicked out and I took over the space and this is about seven or eight years ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer and um, slowly built it up into a place. It was just my place to have my friends over and work and play music and do a lot of that stuff. It took a long time before I actually got into voiceover over there. Yeah, so, so once you, you made this decision to, you know, to really start studying and really start doing it again and rebuild your studio, what do you think was the key that got you started getting you rolling in the right direction? <sighs> Networking, meeting people and you know, meeting people and going to, going to the workouts and going to the classes and and learning about the industry and learning, especially for me coming from, you know, starting in the nineties and coming now into this in 2014, 2015, a lot's changed and a lot's changed to the point where I would go to, I would go and people would say, well, you know, nobody wants your voice anymore. So it doesn't even matter how good you are. And so, you know, what, what kind of encouragement is that? You're not right. gonna, you know, so it's a matter, it took me a long time just to, to get my confidence back, to get my courage back, to go out and do these things. And, just to decide that this is what I was going to focus on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And, and you started doing workshops mm -hmm. at the studio. Started doing at the studio. I would invite people over. That was, you know, the first workout group actually going on four years this week or next week, I think that we started. And you know, the first, first month was just me. And I was like, great workout. I mean, <laughs> Facebook, you know, we had a great workout tonight. It was awesome. Um, and then, you know, one person would show up and then a couple people would show up and then, you know, people would hear about it. I would, I started, I, I created a whole new Facebook profile and basically started from scratch. I started with people who, there's nobody on my, on my list today, except some, some family and some older friends that I even knew three and a half years ago. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't know anybody in this room three and a half years ago. And I started, I just started over and I did that a lot through Facebook, a lot through connecting with people, a lot of with people who were looking for workout groups, I'd invite people over and just kind of spreading the word and opening up my place to let people come in and do what I was doing and just try and get on a mic and see if you even like to do voiceover. Yeah. yeah. Now, you also started with uh, our friend Jay Preston, Voiceover Collective. <laughs> well, I, what, what is the Voiceover Collective? I mean, when I came, it was like, oh, I got to join the Voiceover yeah. Collective. So yeah. I. Well, yeah. I actually joined the Voiceover Collective. Jay started it. Himself. Jay started it. Yeah. Okay. Jay started it, and I, I only met Jay. I want to say three and a half years ago, three years ago. And uh, we met at, at the VO Dojo at a fight club night. 
And it's just one of those things. I think we met in April, and by October of that year, we had partnered up to do the Gardner Collective workout groups. Um, and so we kind of have parallel. Yeah, I definitely am I'm heavily involved in that group. He has the final say on what, what actually happens in there. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it goes hand in hand with what I do, and it goes parallel with my group, with Gardner Street workout group that I have, um, that I do two days a week. And, you know, he started that for kind of the same reason. It was like, you know, how, how do we, how do I keep track of people? How do I like people I've met? I'm like, I, I don't know you. And for him, he's wanted to drink wine. So it's good to well, go yeah, drink that, some wine, you know? Yeah. What, what helps is great. You know? When I first got here, we, you know, we had lunch together at the fat dog, yep. which is where I everybody goes. I believe I was there. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's like, Hey, well, meet for lunch. And then about yep. 40 other people showed up. Yeah. It was that exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, he, he, he built a great community. He's built the foundation of a great community. And I think a lot of people have come together to, to expand on that. And, really you know, make it a self-sustaining um entity and you know to to allow me to come in and partner with him and to build on that group and to you know create this this community that that exists pretty much i don't know anywhere else that exists the way this does in, in this size and is a supportive yeah well there's more voice actors per capita right, right. Than there is just about everywhere else exactly. so uh, yep. that's that's an important point to remember but yeah. it's great to have that community Physically in physical proximity, yes, yeah. which yeah. is which is which is a Absolutely. great thing. Yeah. Uh, if you're just joining us, you missed all sorts of great stuff. But uh, our guest is uh, the one and only Tim Friedlander, who is uh, talking to us about his career. We're going to talk about some other cool stuff. If you've got a question for Tim, you can throw it in our chat room, and the one and only Jack Daniel will relay that question to us, and we will inquire to Tim as to whether he wants to answer it or not. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Let's talk a little bit about the, the studio because it just went over through a major overhaul, and we have we have some video <laughs> yeah. uh, to to, to, a to take a look. At. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. in a very short span of time, uh, six days. Yeah. So, what was the what was the impetus to make this happen and happen so fast? The when I'd made the transition from music into voiceover, it becomes much different on what kind of space you need. Right. And you know, you can get away with a lot less sound proofing and a lot less sound reinforcement if you're doing music. If you got drums up there, you know, it doesn't matter how much sound's coming in, more concern was keeping sound from going out. Right. Um, and as the studio has grown, it's just become more and more important that I'm able to do sessions any time of the day, not just when the long guys aren't out front or, you know, when the garbage truck's coming. Because we did have to, you know, for a while we had we did have to stop and do that when it, before it was at before I really built it into into a usable studio you know, a few years ago and made it made it usable then and then make it even more usable and more soundproof now. Well, this this is what it used to look like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. If you can yeah. see that, uh, you know, it, w it was always fun going in there. It's like, this is very rustic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. well it, a lot of it was, was made, put together out of necessity. It right. wasn't, there was no plan to build a studio. There was no plan to, to do any of this. There wasn't, there was no plan to do anything. I just kind of have followed what's been happening and just paying attention to what's needed and i guess you know like like um seagull seagull said like you get caught up in the tide like things just started kind of rolling and so i just i went with it and started providing a place that people would come to and more people showed up the more i would need to put into it the more i would discover that i had to you know like put sound baffles <laughs> put up you know gobos made out of doors in the back because right. well that's what i had downstairs at the time when i needed them right you and, know? and if it works Use it. And it worked. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. It, it worked great. And then um, it became, you know, substantially busier. And we had a client that booked out six weeks from February through the middle of March. And and that, that, and that was really kind of the, the reason that we pulled the trigger when we did. Yeah. And that was because it had to be done. Um, in order for us to be able to service the client the way they needed yeah. and provide the services they needed. Yeah. So. Well, let's take a look and see what it looked like <laughs> to actually happen in fast motion here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, tell us what's going on here. So we, tore, we, we started by basically adding, taking all of the existing soundproofing that was in the room. And we had, there's two walls, and the two actually three windows in there. So we had to kind of expose the windows to fill those in with rock soul. And um, we had a lot of people here. John Worsham, who was here, was there. Carson is the back, was there. Ty came by for a little while. Denny was there. And we started by getting rid of the doors. I had these 24-inch doors. And there's the door frame blocking the camera right there. Um, but we went with these 36-inch uh, double glass doors. And on the back, you can see um, going in on the, on the right-hand side will be this floating wall we built. We built two walls in the exterior, exterior coming in. Um, 
filled them with rock sole and then did the um, X-type sheetrock over the top of that. And fortunately, I think there's a, uh, I don't think there's anything, uh, you know, not too much time of me standing around staring at the wall here, uh, <laughs> but there's some of that. So we've got, you can see it kind of went pretty quickly. So then we have the two, ex the two exterior walls are up and um, next we moved on the sheet rocking. We, we had it set up so that we were able to sh do kind of in, um, as we went around the room, somebody would, we put up sheet rock while somebody came in and taped and painted so that we were basically running. It's me on my phone apparently for hours. Um, <laughs> So as we went around the room, people were coming behind us and taping and painting and so that we could get finished um, in, in a short period of time. We did this entire build and uh, started at noon on a Friday and at 4 a.m. on Wednesday the following week, we had our first test session. And at 10 a.m. on Thursday morning of the following week, I had our first full session in there. So wow. um, you see it's being taped and painted right now. Some more sheetrock coming in with sheetrock and green glued. You can see the green glue go up right there. Fun and, stuff to work with. Yeah, this is me, and that was me on my laptop trying to like decipher something. I don't remember. We were, we were, angles were causing us problems that day because um, the room obviously is not square. So you get into the ceiling. Um, up here we have you can see the resilient channels and ISO clips on the right hand side. Um, it's more of those going in, and then the sheetrock goes up over that. And uh, those are test swatches on the right hand side of what color we were going to paint the room. Um, they're going with kind of like a slate gray. Kind of like um, <laughs> it does. So, so um, this is basically the, the end of the sheetrock as we're coming up. Unfortunately, we lost the camera for the last 36 hours or so. So it goes all of a sudden that it's done. People are recording. So we have a couple <laughs> sessions. So you can see the all the walls are up, and now we're trying to get into the ceiling. We had this weird angle on the ceiling that we just couldn't get to work. I think we went through. <laughs> I think we cut that angle seven or eight times and we just couldn't get it went through a little bit of sheetrock eh? yeah i went a little bit of sheetrock and then you know of course we we're, were building onto an existing structure that was built before i got there so it definitely wasn't straight there were some issues with you know things being plumb and things being um the way that they should be in order for us to have you know um, a good build over the top at one point we have like a piece of sheetrock two sheetrock should be flush um that are almost a, an inch apart because that's just the way the wall the wall laid um so you can see the painting and the sanding okay, this part is freaking me out look at the <laughs> dust in that room yeah that brutal. yeah we, we had masks for everybody they just you know they were given just the, chose and, now, to use yeah, them. and now we're done so now here is um the first iteration of the room which was um we wanted to go really sparse with the sound panels to try and make the room a little more live and this is when um when you came over dan and checked it out and yeah, the, you got a node yeah um, so we went and uh we we added in more sound panels from there and then we started with the um this production of this this game that we were working on and ended up building into into it more um you came over and, and looked at it once and then george came over and um did did some other tests on it and helped helped us kind of get it really dialed in in a really short period of time because we had you know, um, we had some issues that we had to get taken care of by the end of that day. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, you know, it was, it was, you know, definitely emergency time to get things, get things up and running. Um, you know, when you do it in that short of time, you, there's no, you know, there's not really any time you got to throw it together and you go and record and there's not a huge amount of time to, to really test, you know, and get it done. Um, you know, I mean, I couldn't have done it without everybody. You saw that, you know, that video that was there. Carson yeah. Beck was there. We had Ty Nielsen was there. And Danny how many cases by. of beer? And there, oh, there were many cases of beer. <laughs> they were. I think there's still beer left over from that from that build. Um, you know, but and, and lots of people. Um, Morgan McPherson, uh, Lindsay Rousseau was there. Bethany Monroe. A lot of people came and spent hours upon hours there. And I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, so I apologize if I forgot anybody. Peter and Jack, you came in. Yep. <laughs> Scott, Lam Scott Lambright was there actually almost every single day. He was there, I think, some points more than I was. Yeah. Um, which, you know, but, you know, again, this goes back to kind of the whole community. Like, I mean, I couldn't have done that on my own. Well, Carson, yeah, Carson. I mentioned Carson already. I mentioned him twice because then they took over the studio while I was on tour. So <laughs> we built it and I left and I said, here you go. Have fun. Um, but I mean, it goes to the community. I couldn't have done it on my own. I couldn't have done that build. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to hire somebody to do that build. Especially not in six days. Nobody's going to do it in six days, um, you know. And everybody, everybody stepped up. All I did was ask, and tons of people showed up, and it was amazing, you know, wow. to have that community happen. It was probably up. a lot of fun too. It, it was, was fun good. going in there and saying, you know, you really need to put a frame on this door. Yeah. And that was the first four days it was fun. <laughs> Day five and the last half of you know, the other half of there was uh, I we did okay up until that point. Yeah. There were you know, no tempers flared. It was fine. Yeah. So, so I, I think it's important for people to understand that. 
for what you do, which is you know, you're also a musician, which yeah. we'll talk about in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you know, and you're in West LA, so or West Hollywood. West Hollywood yeah. So mm-hmm. th- there's business there, and there's, there is, and there's yeah. business to be had. Yeah. Building a studio like that is very expensive to do, like, unless you have lots of help. Right. And yeah. apparently lots of sheetrock. Yeah, lots um, of sheetrock. Um, Heavy sheetrock. Yeah. Is that something that somebody else should do or wait until they need to do it? I, I wouldn't recommend anybody do what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a very, you know, well, it, it's, if it needs to be done, then you do it. I mean, that's kind of, I guess that was kind of, it's kind of my take. It was, there was a, you know, there was a, a need that needed to be filled, and I and I and I filled it, and it just kind of grew. And so, it wasn't anything again. Like I didn't really plan on any on any of that. It became it's, it's kind of grown, and I just I followed along and just done what needed to be done to make it keep growing, and to help it, and to provide a place that people can come and and feel comfortable and safe and and have fun and you know get the best performances they can. Yeah, and, so. and that's what's important in the voiceover business. I mean, it's a great example of our community, and uh, you know, and you're a big part of it. So we really appreciate that. And again, if you're just joining us, Tim Friedlander is our guest, and about thirty other people um, <laughs> here here at the Voiceover Body Shop. If you got a question for Tim, uh, again, uh, throw it in the chat room, and uh, we'll be asking him that. And I think you're going to play for us a little bit too, if we have a little time. Have time, sure. Yeah. Now you are a musician. Yes. And you've got a you've got a band, the Urban Renewal Project. Tell us about that. Um, originally, I'm, I, I got my degree in clarinet performance originally, and that, that's something a lot of people will, no. you know. Um, and so to kind of balance out playing clarinet, I took up guitar when I was younger because I needed that <laughs> that balance. Um, and so I've primarily played guitar since in the last uh, probably eight or ten years since I've been in LA. And I joined forces uh, with this guy R. W. Enoch, who runs the Urban Renewal Project, which is a fifteen piece. Big band hip hop orchestra funk band with a rapper and a yeah, singer yeah. and a full horn section. Um, and you know, what's been very interesting is that that kind of it's paralleled the, the the band has grown the same at the same pace and the same time as my voiceover career. So, you know, we we just got back, we were in Indo- Indonesia for the yeah. Java Jazz Fest. Tell, tell, you, so, you got invited to the Java we, Jazz Festival. Yeah, we, um, we actually got invited last year but couldn't. Uh, we had a conflicting tour already scheduled. So, we were able to go back this year, and I've you know I've never been out of the country, so I had to get <laughs> you know I had to get I had to get my my passport and everything. Part of you know part of the the way that I operated things is that I was so convinced that music was going to take me where I wanted to go that I didn't travel on my own, um, and it didn't. So hmm. I didn't travel <laughs> up until you know. So now you know in, at, you know in at forty three I left the country for the first time. I felt like I had to travel someplace where I wanted you know that I'd never been. In the last year, every place we've gone on tour has been outside of Phoenix has been had been stops that I'd never been to. Have been cities I'd never been to. Wow! So you know to have the opportunity to go and see the country and see the world and play music, um, you know, is amazing. And 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 I couldn't have done it without all the people in this community who made you know like I said Carson Carson Beck who I just met a little over a year ago. <laughs> we met in January of last year. Um, I you know I turned over the studio to him and. June or July of last year to have him run the studio, um, but we're both from Washington, so you know it's just kind of it's in the blood. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I couldn't have left. I couldn't have left. We had this massive game project we were working on that was six weeks long, eight hour sessions a day, and I couldn't have left town and gone on tour if there wasn't somebody that I trusted who I could, who I knew could do the job as well as it needed to be done. Um, yeah. Is that? yeah. See, now I, I understand with musicians. Yeah. It's about the music. Right. It's always about the music. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, that's like We're traveling and singing. Yeah, the yeah. And then it's about the music. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, Tim Friedlander is our guest. Uh, we'll get to your questions and lots of other cool stuff right after this. Don't go away. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all new American crime story tonight on FX. It's week only. It's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime, blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. 
this week at Home Depot. It's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. You know, we told you about a great discount at voiceoveressentials.com two weeks ago. And Harlan Hogan is extending the exclusive VOBS discount. Buy any items on the homepage that total over 100 bucks, and get $15 off. Just enter VOBS, VOBS in the promo code field in the shopping cart and click the submit promo code button. Just the products on the homepage, no bundles. Likewise, the VO1A voiceover microphone, box pop stop filter, and the MicPort Pro bundle is still on sale as well. Just click on the on sale menu item at the top of the page or on the mobile menu. Finally, VoiceOver Essentials has put up their annual summer sessions recording on the road tips and suggestions on the website. It's never too early to start thinking about that summer vacation. These are some tips to help you stay productive on the road and help pay for that vacation. Just click on the tropical sunset on any page to take you to the tips page. VoiceOverEssentials.com, place for all your voiceover equipment. And apparently, your reading needs do. Thanks, Aaron, for being our sponsor for the past seven years. We love you. We'll be right back. You're still watching VOBS. <laughs> you are watching VOBS TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheap sandwich. You're still it's watching yeah, VOBS. VOBS. We're still watching VOBS with Tim Friedlander here and uh, and the entire Mormon Tabernacle Choir, apparently. Um, everybody, now. Uh, George, we got some questions for Tim. Apparently, lots of people loving the story. Indeed. First one is from T uh, Paul Stefano. Hey, what's up, Paul? Paul. Oh. Nice. Has a certain company who cannot be named given them any trouble for picking up the online weekly workout format? It has to deal with education and doesn't make money, so I don't think they even care. Um, but I do, I do need to mention that because that actually goes back to, to Jay. Um, Jay and uh, Brad Venable and I kind of, kind of started to take this, what we were able to do here, and extend it out to the rest of the, the world, actually. Um, and so we kind of picked up the slack. We knew we couldn't compete in any of the, the voiceover casting area, but we definitely could compete when it comes to voiceover education. And so we put together VO Weekly Workout to try and pick up the slack um, from a couple of the sites that shut down in the last few months. And um, it's been great. It's a learning curve. It's a, it's a lot of work and um, it's a lot of fun. And um, it's great that we're able to, to give back to the whole world in that sense, which, so which sounds cheesy, but it's uh, we have people all over the country, yeah, all yeah, the world who are Yeah, because now you're doing it online. It's not yeah. just a, you know, the Wednesday mm -hmm. night hanging out at yeah. the studio. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday at the studio, Thursday at the studio, Sunday at the studio, studio and actually um, I started a, a group in Philadelphia um, last fall. So we have the Gardner Street Philly group um, with Jamie <laughs> Muffet. Philly. Um, yeah, Gardner, <laughs> Gardner Street Philly. And, um, you know, that's um, that's been great to be able to kind of you know, help them along as they're starting that workout group. Um, it's been cool to see. That's great. Yeah. All right. Uh, Joy Baker asks, what would you say to someone who has never been in a workout group but wants to start one? Any guidance for how it should work? Having been that, in a few myself <laughs> yes. and starting a few myself, yes, they're yes. definitely essential, aren't they? The, I, I, I mean, I think any, you know, continuing education, lifelong education is important, but that comes from, you know, being an artist. You know, we never stop. Like, you know, you're always taking lessons. You're always studying. If you're acting, you'll go, you know, I mean, big actors go into a movie, then they'll come off for a year and go study and get better. Um, so I'm a huge advocate of continuing to do that with the right people. And you need to find somebody who you connect with and who you trust. And I think that's, especially in voiceover, it's important to find somebody that you trust um, and that believes in you and you believe in them to help you help you do this. Um, you know, as far as starting them, you know, it was, I was lucky because I had a space. And... If you don't have a space, it becomes harder to do. Um, though there is an, there's an, a group that just started in New York called Voice Actors of New York, and hopefully I got that right. Um, and I just learned about them yesterday, 
and they had a meetup group last night. They got 500 people in their group. They had a meetup wow. last night. They had 50 show up. Um, but again, they have a place that they're able to go and do this at. Um, and as far as starting one, you know, when, when Jamie started his, he and I had had an hour conversation about what I'd learned over the years of starting the groups. And the biggest thing is you need to know your community and know what they need. And this community needs something different than what the group in Philly needs. And if you're going to start something, it's just, you know, find people who want to do it. And if it's just you for six months, just do it for six months and keep doing it and keep doing it and doing it. There's people out there, even if it's you and one other person or two people, I think there's a community of voice actors out there in almost every city who would love to be part of a workout group. It doesn't even have to be big. If you have a living room and you need a space this size here, you can get four or five people in here to do this. It doesn't even have to be on a mic. This needs to be around people who can hear you, who can give you feedback. And again, people that you trust and that, you know, are going to be honest with you, whether that's good or bad. Yeah. George, you got the next question. 10, four, um, from Tremaine Kendrick Mosley. Hey, Trey, what's happening? Nice. How did winning the audition contest at that's voiceover help in any way to propel or further your career? You know, that's a, that's a tough question to, to answer. I think for myself, the biggest thing it did was give me confidence and it gave me the confidence to know that I wasn't terrible at what I was doing. Um, which I may, may seem like, an, you know, I, maybe I, you know, I need to win a contest to prove that I don't suck. But apparently, that's that's how um, that's how I roll. Um, but we, you know, we think yeah. that every morning. It's <laughs> yeah. like, what are we exactly. doing this yeah. for? It's crazy. You know, it, it goes back to like the kind of the networking thing. It just it it got my name out there, and not only did did that make me well known, but I met a bunch of people there. I met a ton of people at that event that I still talk to, that I'm friends with, that have become colleagues that I've been able to work with. Um, they're all great people. And so it was, you know, yeah, it was a great boost of confidence for me, but it was also a great opportunity to meet people and uh -huh. to network and to, to just find other people in the community who I could help and who could help me. Yeah. In a sense, you know? There's no, there's, there's no community like the voiceover community. I don't it's, think we won't uh, find this with photographers <laughs> or web developers, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe, you know, graphic artists. They don't, yeah. They're not the same. It's, yeah. What what is it about the the voiceover community that just makes us all such great friends? Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, our producer Catherine Curden hey, actually Catherine. Has, has an actual question for you. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to us uh, in reference to toy makers and how fun was it working with the History Channel? Um, man, those are two two great things. Um, you know, those both are just those are just one of those things that you just. When the opportunity arises, you just got to be ready for it. And Toy Makers, I think, was I, I got that show. Um, it's on Velocity Channel. And we're going into our third season, and I've been narrating it for the um, for the whole run. And I was at a workout group. I was at the dojo, and a producer heard me, and she said, "Hey, you know, you have a great voice. I have this uh, this show coming down, you know, coming down the pike, and I'd love to have you be the narrator." And I was like, "Okay, you, you know, like." Sure, here I want to give you, you know, I want you to bring you in. And you go, oh, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. And a year later, I got a phone call and she said, Hey, the show's going forward and uh, we got you on and you're going to be our narrator. And we start recording in about a month or two. Are you ready? And <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was ready and jumped on it. And um, now we're in, going into season three as the number one and the number one show on, um, on the Velocity channel. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, I picked up, I've done, um, kind of moving into the car stuff. I've been, the uh, done all the motor trend on demand spots for the last year as well, which has been kind of in that same realm. Um, history channel, I did a series called evil genius on history channel. And that was, that's, that is a great example of why you answer your phone on a Friday night <laughs> at eight 30 when you're having dinner. Um, I got a, I just got a random phone call from somebody asking me to do a sizzle reel. And I was like, sure. And they said, when do you need it? And they said, well, now. And so I left dinner, went home, and worked with them for the next four or five hours, so about one o'clock in the morning, going back and forth. And over the next couple of months, I did a few more sizzle reels. And I got a call one day, and they said, hey, that sizzle reel that you did is going to go to production. And since you did the sizzle reel, they loved your voice, and your voice is going to go with the show. And so that. <laughs> that's, and that's like uh, hitting the green from 200 yards. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, and it's like, keep, keep yeah. you coming next week. You yeah. Know, you know, uh, but, you know, if I hadn't, if, if I had 
not been confident that I could do it, it would have been a whole different story. Um, and had I not been where I was, if it had been a couple years earlier, I wouldn't have been able to go in and do that show. I wouldn't have been able to go do three hour sessions at a time and maintain an, an eight, eight, episode, eight episode show. Yeah. I didn't have the skill. I didn't Your have classic the classic luck favors the prepared scenario. Yeah, right? yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You got the next question. Since I interrupted so rudely. <laughs> it, was your, it was your turn. Scott. <laughs> Maurice A. Scott says, Tim, what and who have been your biggest influences in voiceover? Man, that is a tough question. I, I, somebody asked me that question in music as well, and it's such a tough thing to answer because I think, you know, if if you really pay attention, everybody's an influence and everybody that you interact with can be an influence. I know it's kind of a cop-out, but um, I don't think there's really anybody in particular. There have been a lot of people who have supported me along the way that that have even been invaluable to, to, to me getting the opportunities that I've had. Um, but I'm, I'm the rare person. I don't really know much about other voice talent when I came into this. I didn't know who people were. I didn't know who the promo people were. I didn't know who the narrators were. I don't didn't know who the animation people were, the video game people were. So I just kind of came into this and everybody at that point was just kind of all on even ground. I didn't know who anybody was. Um, I think, you know, right now, at least as I, I'm always most influenced when it comes from the educational standpoint, and I love to see people succeed and get better. And that to me is, is I guess, inspires me and influences me to get better at what I do. Um, you know, and, and I'm more, I'm, I get more excited about my friends having success than I do. Um, you know, and I'll, and I'll tell a quick little story about my friend, Michelle, um, who was not here, but you know, she'd been coming to my workout group for a couple years and she'd been working really hard and she came in and did a read in the booth and it was just everything she'd been working on for two years just kind of gelled. And I actually I cried. <laughs> I actually was sitting in the room and I was like, That's, I'm so proud of you. Like, I, you know, I, I shed a tear. And because it was just she and, and you could see that was a, a change in her ability and a change in her confidence. And, you know, that influenced me to keep doing what we do and to, you know, to keep doing this. And I always say I, I always say we because it's not just me. I, I happen to be kind of a facilitator, but I, I couldn't do it without everybody. And I yeah. don't think any of us can do it alone. I tried no, for yes. a long, long time. It didn't work. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, Devox asks, because Devox, Devox asks every week, uh, <laughs> can you share some interesting or unusual workout exercises or tools you've discovered? Man, um, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to tell it like, actually, I think everybody in the room here has been to my, it's been to the workout group. I'm going to turn it over to them. Anybody, has there anything you guys have done that was particularly interesting or weird or different? I mean, I know we did. We did. We did one where we had just we had to narrate to a video that we had no idea what it was. It was. Just, it was. <laughs> um, we just put a video on and I made everybody improvise over it. Um, see what they came up with. Um, the F word replace. Yeah. F word replace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, yeah, that's an that's an old one. That came. That's from all over the place. Um, God, I don't know anything. Re reading to music is always a great thing to do. I mean, you know, it's. I don't know if there's any anything in particular. It's just all you just it's, we just try different things. I don't know what else. <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know what you do so well is you bring out you could deliver and uh, elicit honest feedback from people, and that's the most valuable tool. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, that's that's the best thing you can do. I mean, that's the best. Honest you know. but caring. Honest but caring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Caring, yes. yeah. You know, I, I'm not a huge. I'm not the type of person that has a bunch of drills and warm ups and things that I do because I don't. Do that. We don't do that when we talk normally, right? So obviously, if I'm going to go into like you know a three-hour session, I want to prepare myself physically, but I just want to go in and talk the way I talk and sound the way I sound. And for me, that doesn't require a lot of warm-up to do um, from tongue twisters and stuff like that. Um, but that's just you know again, that's just me. Everything. I mean, this is all just you know. Don't ever don't don't follow my path. Like, this is just the way I do things for myself, you I know? I think the biggest yeah. thing is, is that Tim builds a relationship with everybody who goes in there. And he begins to work with you as a person, and that's how he makes you better. Yeah. Yeah. Honesty and all yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. I, I will attest to that. <laughs> I can definitely see that. Uh, Tim 
Tippett. Hey, the Tim. one and only Tim Tippett. Tim too. We no. actually, you know, we met. <laughs> we met because somebody tagged me and Tim on Facebook. Wow. And they thanked me for something I didn't do, and I said, uh, "You're welcome." And so, <laughs> here, let let me ask this the way Tim would ask it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. So, uh, how did your music experience help you with in voiceover? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's. I, I think the biggest thing it's done is it, it's, it's taught, taught me to listen. And I think that that's important in anything that you're doing. Listen, but don't listen to yourself. If that makes sense. <laughs> right? You, know, you, don't want to, you don't want to be listening to yourself. I think also it helped me with um, performance, performance anxiety. I think going back to, to that voiceover, I was used to being on stage in front of a bunch of people. So as a voice talent, that whole nervousness, not that I wasn't nervous, but that experience I'd had before. Um, mm -hmm. And so I had that. It wasn't my first time being in front of a crowd, so my performance didn't get affected by that um, much. Definitely got mm -hmm. affected. All right. So. George? Uh, this one's from Jen Henry. Jen. Uh, first, thanks for the VO weekly workout. Uh, you're welcome. Um, you guys are bringing it. The question, was there a particular gig, event, or single opportunity that you look at as the turning point? This is something you may have spoken about earlier. Yeah. Um, the thing that dropped you into the gear that tracked you to where to where you are today. I mean, you know, I, I go back to Voice 2014 in that it had I not gone, I would not be here. I would not be doing voiceover. I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't know anybody in this room right now. Um, so for that, um, that was that was transformative. And then, you know, the next little steps along the way. Um, that's voiceover was definitely the next opportunity, a next event that, that kicked things up. Getting toy makers kicked things up. Having more people show up to the studio kicked things up. Um, so I don't know that there was a single single opportunity uh, more than it was just taking advantage of all the opportunities that presented themselves along the way as um, as my career progressed. Um, well. Yeah, Vanessa Richardson, th she thinks that uh, uh, you're a legend in the making. <laughs> Vanessa, I miss you, Vanessa. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Hope all's well. <laughs> she says, how do you stay organized with everything you have going on, man? It's a lot of stuff between the gigs, engineering, Garden Street. Um, OCD? <laughs> um, you know, um, I, I am constantly connected to my phone and my computer and... To Facebook and I don't have a life outside of that <laughs> otherwise um, you know but I, you know, I, I really I, I did um, last Saturday was my first day off since the day we started the build in the middle of January between you know go back I was in grad school I was teaching full-time I was rehearsing I was running the work at grips I was trying to build my career um, I compartmentalize I don't, <laughs> I don't really know um, I, I I don't, I would say I drink a lot, but I don't drink. Um, you know, I mean, part of it is, um, I just, I keep track of my calendar. I know I, a lot of it is, it's improvised. I mean, yeah. A lot of it's improvised. I did, um, it's kind of the way I teach is that I, I hate lesson plans. I hate planning anything. I'll plan out my sessions. Um, I have tie on the calendar for tomorrow morning. As a matter of fact, um, but I have my calendar for that. Otherwise, I just improvise, and that's the best. I mean, that's the best thing I can say. And you know, and and to, not a joke. I don't have a life. I mean, I don't have. I don't have a family. I have my dog. I was going to say, you know. being young and single doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> yeah. well, hey, uh, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, um, but um, no, I mean, it's it's. I made I made a decision to to do this 100 percent music and voiceover grad school grad school's done so now i can put all the rest of my time into music and voiceover and that's what i do 20, 24 hours a day seven days a week this is all i think about and this is all i do and i love it and you do sleep occasionally i, I <laughs> sleep on occasion yeah 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 as long as the dog's not snoring I can, i'm totally fine and keep me awake um yeah and show's an important part of your she life is, too right? she is an important part but it's an important part of everybody's life here um and people people show up to just to come hang out with the dog which is fine with me um but uh, nice it's question, man. Yes, we'll slip this one in. Yeah, from John C. Uh, yeah. He says, "Any advice on the number of genres to focus on in the beginning, and then add on over time in general, or how to tell is is it time to add more than say just a commercial 
genre that you're focusing on? I mean, that is, man, when, like, part of that is it goes back to what I, you know, kind of what I said earlier is that you need people you trust. Right. And that, you know, I, I worked, I worked with Dave Walsh. You had a, a guest here. I worked with him after I won that voiceover. I went and worked with him almost every week for an entire year. And so between the two of us, we knew when it was time for me to, to, to do my demo. Um, once I had broken through all the things that I needed to get. The he's, psychology of voiceover. He's a great you know, coach. I he's, work he's, with he's, him too. Yeah, yeah, he's a great coach. Um, you know, but as far as like, you know, the commercial is where your bread and butter is going to be. And that's, especially if you're going to look for an agent, that's what they're going to want you to have. Everything beyond that is... Um, is your choice as, as you want to do it. I mean, if you want to get into video games, focus on your video game stuff. If you want to get animation, focus on your animation. I think it's a hard thing to know when you're, when you're ready for that because you don't, same thing with playing an instrument. Like, you know, I can practice all I want and I just keep taking, I don't hear myself making the same mistakes. You need somebody to help you with that or you need somebody to show you, show you, yes, you're doing great with this. Now it's time to move on. Right. Um, and so, you know, again, it may sound like a cop out, but it's, you know, that's something that you, you and people you trust need to decide for yourselves. And I think there is, there sometimes can be a rush to try and get a demo to get things done so that you can get into the, into the industry or get into the business, start working. Um, you know, if you have the drive and you want to do it, by all means, go and do it, but don't, don't do it until you're ready. Don't do it until you're ready. Yeah. And when are you ready? I mean, that's, that's such a hard thing to, to answer. You know, I, I thought I was ready when I came to LA in 2002 and you know, sure. I get a demo done and then I don't do voiceover for two years and an agent calls you in and you do a read and they were like, what the heck was that? You're not even the same person as the demo. It's like, they're like, get out of here. What are you doing? So I thought I was ready. I wasn't ready. And it took me another 12 or 13 years before I was ready. Um, but Again, it goes back to you need people you trust and you yeah. need you need, you know, a group. If you don't have a group, put together a group. I tell everybody to put together a group. It's gotta be at least somebody somebody else in your town who's doing what you're doing. You like to do voiceover. If it can be, you know, in person is so great. If if you want to do it over Skype and do it over Skype, but you know, the opportunity just to work with people because we spend all our time in our booth locked away, right. hiding from the world if you're not careful, you yeah, know. So I live in this blockhouse yeah, here. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Get a little lonely at hey, times. Can we, can we get Tim to play us out? Yeah. Can we <laughs> play you out? Yeah, well, well, but, well, well we tell sure. everybody about that George is going to be uh, at your studio yes. on Thursday. He will be at my studio next, week, next Thursday. Tell us about it, George. This Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah, Thursday. yeah. yeah you better Thursday. be in there. Yeah. <laughs> He's checking my calendar. <laughs> I'm going to be there to talk about my presentation on just creating the practical personal studio. That's the stuff that you guys hear us talk about on the show a lot, but focused into, you know, a really concise presentation and of course opening up for a lot of Q and a, which I hopefully yeah. will get. So yeah, well, and Thursday I'm driving back from Vegas, just to make sure I get there for that. Awesome. That's going to be, yeah, it's going to be great. And you know, next time we'll send you, we're actually um, kind of expanding the sandbox LA footprint with, um, Jack and Carson, we're going to add some satellite studios so that we'll have Soundbox, Sermon Oaks, and Soundbox Studio City. Cool. And uh, you're doing demos, too. Some demos, yeah. Yep. Um, there's plenty of commercial people out there. Um, we have kind of some areas of expertise that we work on. More um, boutique type of demos. Boutique, yeah, yes. exactly. Um, and so we're working on that. Carson and I are doing that. Um, again, he and I met <laughs> a year ago, and I already turned him over to my, take him to my studio. So. Yeah. So what are you going to play for us here? Uh, this is a song called Castile. Um, I spent a lot of time about six, seven years ago doing a lot of like open tuning um, slide guitar work. And so this is a song that I wrote out of um, in that time. And we'll tune first yeah. since it's been there. How's that? Uh, hey. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim Tippetts. No, he's cringing over there on the other. <laughs> I know. So that that part's gonna go on loop next time I do my my uh, my reel for my music. We'll put that part on there. All right.
Tim Friedlander. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That was great to hear. Awesome. It's, it's good to hear music in this studio. That's what it was built for. Anyway. All right. George and I'll be right back to uh, wrap things up right after this. Thanks a lot. That was cool. great. Yeah. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceover xtra.com All righty, we're back and uh, thanks again to uh, Tim Friedlander for joining us tonight and uh, playing us some music, which was really cool but a great story and thanks for all the love you guys are sending him uh, on at our chat room yeah, thank you. Uh, Next week on this very show Tim Friedlander was here this week next week Scott Brick uh, will be sitting in that very chair <laughs> And uh, Dan. Uh, yes, oh, got my name's wired across. Um, there were two tech questions I wanted to jump to oh, real quickly for you. You should be because they, they tie into what we were talking about earlier. Um, John in the, John's in the studio, right? John, right working. here. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> he said, This one I can definitely answer. So, should we run longer mic cables and not longer USB cables? Yes, yes. <laughs> cool. I think that was the that that's, was that's, what that's we came point. up with there. In general, yes, definitely. My cables handle long runs much, much better than USB does. Um, and then D-Box said, if cables have to be parallel, how far apart do they need to be? <laughs> is there a formula? There probably is, man. I, I have to say, <laughs> you'd have to Google that. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know how far apart, far apart enough is. You can probably do some experiments on your own and actually... Yeah. Put a mic cable uh, next to a power cord and move them until the sound, the noise goes away. Yeah. I don't know what it is, honestly, but yeah. I would say at least a foot away from each other. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So anyway, try try it and see what works. Yeah, that's well, the best way to try that. Anyway, Scott Brick's going to be with us uh, nice. next week on April twenty third. We were wondering who this mystery guest was. And now <laughs> it's not a mystery. Uh, somebody I've always wanted to meet. Uh, Avio agent, soon to be book author. Ilko Dradonsky. So, Dradonsky. I will get that right in two weeks. Uh, He's April been an 30th. agent for a long time. He's been around it. He certainly has. Uh, April 30th, Kristen Lennox and her daughter will be here, which will be really interesting. Uh, May 7th, Keith Farley. Keith Farley. Uh, and, and May 21st, uh, well, long time away, uh, Harry Dunn promos at the he did my promo demo. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So that's going to be lots of great stuff. Who are our donors of the week, Mr. Whittem? Oh, we've got donations from Andrew Kaufman, Eric Aragoni, uh, Connolly Voiceover, which is John Connolly. Uh, going down the list, continuing Don Griffith. Click and look. Martha Kahn. Martha. And few more here that are coming in from last week. Shannon Pennington Baird and Antland Productions. So nice. pretty much all of those are regular donors. Those names those are all names I have said on this show before. <laughs> Except I think John Connolly might be a new donor, but we really, really appreciate the support. It's very, very helpful. It's allows us to do some major studio upgrades. Uh, tonight this show is being produced on a completely new system. And yes, those watching it live and possibly on YouTube are going to experience a few issues. Um, we know we do know there's some audio issues that we have to sort out, and we apologize. But it's been a huge upgrade we had to make, and um, it should allow for us to produce a tighter, 
cleaner looking show and eventually up the ante in terms of our production values. So um, thank you again for the donations we're receiving. That's something that's helped us uh, allow to immensely do big wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. Uh, once again, you need help with uh, your home studio. You can go to georgethetech.com or homevoiceoverstudio.com. Figure it out one way or another. Uh, you've got a podcast, uh, a geeky podcast you're doing. Uh, you're not being a geek I guy, and you get, you get to do your geek podcast. I am not the geekiest <laughs> on this podcast, which is a nice change. <laughs> uh, it's called the Pro Audio Suite, and uh, the Pro Audio Suite podcast, and it's with uh, Andrew Peters, Darren Robertson. They're both from Australia. And Source Elements own Robert Marshall. Four of us geek out. But it's not just geekiness. We had um, we had Tom Deere on, actually, on episode four, who was just recently on VOBS. So if you want to hear from more, more from Tom, check out episode four. It was a really good one, too. We talked a little bit about room acoustics as well and some other things. We're also going to record an episode here at NAB uh, with, with Robert, who is here. Um, I think below, uh, after the show tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. But go check it out. You should be able to find us on uh, all the usual places like iTunes. All righty. Uh, the show logs, Jack DeGoli is still writing everything we say, uh, sitting out there in the desert. So when the YouTube video comes out, that will be uh, placed there. So you'll be able to see exactly when everything was said. And you'll be able to find it much easier. Uh, also, uh, we have a podcast in this show. So if you can't uh, watch us live and you're, like, driving around a lot, you can find that uh, VOBS. Just look for it wherever fine podcasts are doled out. Um, <laughs> let's see here. We do the show live every Monday night, uh, 6 Pacific time. And, again, if you're, you're welcome to come join us here in the studio, if you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area, uh, write to us here at the guys at VOBS.TV. And uh, show us your booths. You know, I mean, this was this was Tim's old booth here. <laughs> it's the old and, uh, one. We don't have a picture of the new one. Yeah, uh, well, well, I'll yeah, send a picture. <laughs> people will have to go to, yeah. the, to the new studio uh, and see that. Uh, show us your booths, but please put them in not portrait, but in landscape. landscape. Okay, yeah. What is it with you guys in shooting stuff <laughs> in portrait? It's it's kind of nutty. But do it in landscape so we can get the entire scope of your studio. Um, and we'd like to, of course, thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, Via Togogo, and VoiceActorWebsites.com, and J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Well, we'd like to thank Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage once again. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curridan, for getting us great guests like Tim Friedlander. And... Uh, Jack Daniel on the chat room duty, and our floor producer and technical director, Sue Merlino, who had did yeoman work tonight. Sue! Uh, yes, Ooh. and Jack DeGoldi for the show notes, and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining us. We know this is not an easy business. But, as you heard, persevere. Maybe you can get there and, uh, and enjoy this here in this wonderful industry. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard, by the way. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shot. Or VO. VO.